beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. Hosanna, Hosanna. The worshippers sing holy. Just the worshippers. Help me worship us. Holy, holy, blessed is he. It was a triumphant entry. In the name of our God. And he rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song could the season God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant end, riding upon a horse. And that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Blessed is he who comes in the name. One more time. Hosanna. Hosanna. Just sing it one more time. Holy, holy now. Come on, let's raise up our voices and sing. Holy. family of faith we understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit on a detail to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. 
you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit so that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. That it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Until you understand the operation of the heavens, you have no right to do anything on the earth. And it's our job here at Koinonia to listen Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon the watch, my watch, and set myself upon the tower, and I will see what the Lord will say. The Bible says, what I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. And it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the Father to hear what he's communicating for every season. God is preparing us, training us, fashioning us by his spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season and hear me friends if you found your way into this place i'd like you to know that god brought you by his spirit to build to equip to empower you he said rule thou in the midst of thy enemies it takes understanding he said he made many lights but he made two great lights one light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night if you don't have that light you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night there is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule and God is communicating these lights and these truths unto us and father we thank you it's a privilege and we respect it we don't just believe in you we respect you thank you father in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated We began a series last week on the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us were blessed last week? Praise God. We began to establish. Please take out your pen, your writing materials. It's a teaching, so as much as possible, whenever you're coming for a meeting like this, come with your writing materials. God is teaching and building us. There's only so much your mind can at a time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so I began a teaching last week and I began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom, how that the word kingdom comes from two words. It means the domain of the king. Hallelujah. How many of us still remember that? And we began to explain how that in the system of God, the kingdom of God is everywhere the influence and the, the authority, the rulership, the dominion of the king is exercised is permitted to find expression hallelujah and we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland how many of you remember that we began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom and that every time a colony is created it is created either by conquest you fight and gain access to that colony or you find a virgin land and occupy it hallelujah the, a colony is, is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom. And I did tell us that in a kingdom system, everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king. 
Hallelujah. In a democracy, we have people living for themselves. For instance, in America, you can decide to walk up naked. I can decide to walk naked tomorrow. And when people say, Josh, are you okay? I say, what is your business? We are in a democracy. But in a kingdom system, everyone lives for the king. Hallelujah. If at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king, you were termed a rebel. Hallelujah. And I began to explain to us that we are not just believers, we are not just born again Christians, but we are citizens of a kingdom. Hallelujah. And that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance, not just to our savior, not just to our Lord, but to our king. Many know him as savior. Many know him as Lord, but few know him as king. Daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And Isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace, there shall be no end. And God is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom. Because for many people, Christianity is just a blind race. A race out of hell to heaven and we stop there. And there are many believers who are not partnering with the Holy Spirit. And every time you see our posters, when we write koinonia, we write intimacy and partnership. That we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we began to explain how that man was given dominion. Adam was given a kingdom. Are you listening to me? Adam was not given a religion. He was given a kingdom. Genesis 1.26, he said, have dominion. The word dominion is a language of royalty. It says rule. And Adam lost and gave the keys to Satan. Hallelujah. And I did tell us that the entire Bible can be summarized thus. The king has a kingdom. And out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth. Hallelujah. And for a period of time, man walked in the council of the kingdom. He sent his governor. The governor of the kingdom is the spirit of God. I told us the concept of the governor, that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values, the culture, the principles of the mother kingdom. That's the primary assignment of the governor. He's a representative of the king. Hallelujah. And then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land. And he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king. And there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens. Every kingdom has systems, has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people, has a political system. Every kingdom has a system for rest and, and all of these things, we are going to be discussing it. Hallelujah. There are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true Christian on the earth. For many of us, we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell, or get married and have children and grow old and then say, I've contributed my quota to the planet, there's more. Hallelujah. Say after me, I am an ambassador, a representative of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so from Genesis chapter 3 until um, Matthew chapter 1, the coming of Jesus, he was the kingdom lost. You can summarize everything. The kingdom was lost. Hallelujah. It was not God's original design for the nation of Israel to have kings. He desired their king. It's out of their strong heart and they were a stiff-necked people. Hallelujah. And so he told Samuel to go and anoint Saul and then David and all the kings that followed. It was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when Jesus came into the scene, it would not be a strange thing. Hallelujah. So the nation of Israel understood the concept of kingdom. And then Jesus showed up. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. And when Jesus stepped upon the planet, he began to speak about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Started talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto this. He began to liken the kingdom to many things. And all through his work on earth, he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom. When he showed love, it was a manifestation of the love of the Father. 
when he worked miracle signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and i did tell us that jesus for our sake he came to restore the kingdom hear me the primary purpose of jesus was not to come and take us to heaven don't stone me yet it's a teaching hallelujah the primary purpose of jesus was to restore the kingdom to restore the kingdom that's why revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall rule in this life in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter 1 says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter 1 down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that govern the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to running to heaven we are not staying very long there we're coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts god is reorienting us so that we understand that christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen i will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom 
some versions add S. The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Interesting scripture. It says the seventh angel. Is it possible to get this on Amplified? The seventh angel, okay. I like the rendition in Amplified. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom, the systems of this world, the word world here is the Greek word cosmos, the social system of the world. He said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Tonight, we'll be continuing in this series. We have a lot to cover wherever we can stop. Let your heart be open. Hallelujah. I'll be talking on kingdom advancement. It's a continuation of the series. Kingdom advancement. Advancing the frontiers of the kingdom. We stopped last week by helping us understand that Jesus came to restore the kingdom. Say after me, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. And he did restore the kingdom. Say one more time, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. Hallelujah. And not just to restore the kingdom, but to restore the citizens of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why he died. That's why he went through everything he went through. Jesus Christ bled and he cried, he wept, was beaten by cruel and wicked people. He went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us. Hallelujah. And the next step, when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored, the next step is to receive the kingdom. Hallelujah. Say after me, the next step is to receive the kingdom. How do you receive the kingdom? By embracing the king of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what we call being born again. Hallelujah. Being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom. So when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again, we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing. We're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why you come up and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. And you say, I declare that you are Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Lord of my life. You are the king. I choose to submit to your governing authority, thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom. And every time you make that decision, as a proof, he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life. It is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us, but he can live in us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as a citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Very, very important. So you receive the kingdom. You embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life. Because hitherto, by reason of the fallen nature, all of us by default submitted in Adam to the governing authority of Satan. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom. So it is a kingdom. The kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as an unbeliever the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or 
enter. Listen, let me tell you something, friends. Getting born again is not all. It's just the beginning. Are you following me now? There are so many believers who think that all there is to the Christian life or the kingdom life, I love to call it, is just to get born again. And so we get born again. There are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom. They don't know what else to do. And they come and say, okay, so now what am I supposed to do? And we say, well, keep, keep praying fast once in a while. Read your Bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow. And the people cannot understand. After six months, they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is. Hallelujah. And they come and they say, well, I've been born again. I say, who has not been born again? Let's continue being born again. Just remain born again. Hallelujah. But there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again. Hallelujah. Your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom. Say after me, the entrance to the kingdom. It's like when you, you get born again, you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the moment you get born again, there are two things you get familiar with. Number one is the constitution of the kingdom, what we call the Bible. The Bible is the constitution of the kingdom, inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king. Hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character Hallelujah. So when you begin to study the Bible, you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king. You understand that this is how he operates. We begin to understand that our king is a king of love. That the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love. Are you following me now? We begin to understand these things. And then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor, the one we call the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the whole, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, it said he will guide you into all truth. He will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom, communicating unto you the values of the kingdom. Hallelujah. He will first and foremost work on your mindset. Say after me, mindset. When he works upon your mindset, you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom. At first, you will go through a lot of conflict. The Bible makes us to understand in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not, desire, will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict. Because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms. Are you following me now? And so when God begins to introduce you to his system, is usually challenging at first. Why? Because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset. Are you following me now? The world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things. And hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness. But when you come into the kingdom system, the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom. Then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattered and yet increased. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty and is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom. That's what we call the anointing. The anointing is God's authorization upon your life, validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king. When you get born again, you receive the kingdom into your life, into your heart. You receive the governor of the kingdom. 
the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit and god designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further we get filled with the holy ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning are you following me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of god's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion 
That's what we call purpose. Are you following me now? Your purpose on earth is your role, the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda. Thank you, Jesus. This is the current agenda of the king. That we partner with the governor of the king. Having been taught the values, the culture, the lifestyle. And you see, God, does, God cannot send you. The king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message. Until he schools you. Are you listening to me? You must become a true citizen of the kingdom. Before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life. That's why when God calls a man, he builds that man. Then he sends the man. That's what koinonia is all about. Hallelujah. Right now, God is giving us the mindset of his kingdom. Helping us to understand his ways. His operation. Bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal phenomenon. Many charismatics and Pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues. He's the governor of the kingdom. It's beyond tongues and prophecy. And falling down and standing up. Are you following me now? He's the one who gives us direction. He's the captain. The one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement. So we have a responsibility to partner with the governor. To bring many under the rule of the king. That's what we call soul winning. So soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership. Hallelujah. So for many denominations, what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom, but to have many members of our churches. So you see someone who is born again, it tells you we are in the same kingdom. You say, no way, no way. If you are not under my denomination, you don't belong to the kingdom. Interesting. It's the nonsense that is going all around. God is not teaching us denomination and dogma. He's teaching us kingdom. Are you following me now? That the most important thing, all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms. Hallelujah. When we understand this, we'll stop discriminating ourselves. Because I wonder what we are going to do in heaven. That big table in the last supper, there's only one table. The Bible doesn't say there are many. So you better love your neighbor. Because if your seatmate belongs to... Let's continue. Hallelujah. And then to replicate the life and the culture of the king. Say after me, the life and the culture of the king. Let me have one Yoruba person, one Igbo person, and then one northern. And quickly, quickly, three people. Let's do that quickly, quickly. Yoruba, Igbo. Please come, come up, three of you. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Aaron is from Kaduna State. She's from the East. And Ejimi is from the what? West. Now, listen, listen. All of these geographical locations have certain things. Are you following me now? They have a common language. They have a common culture. They have values. Is that correct? When a Yoruba person, especially, a, a, well, it, it happens with everybody really, but especially the ladies, want to greet, what happens? They prostrate. It's their culture. I follow me. So you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from. Is that correct? When you hear them talking and they say, Eshe, and all of that, you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And then for the Igbos, they have, I, we had a sumptuous meal. It reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of God that we had on Sunday in Pastor William's house. I appreciate them. You don't know what, I appreciate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ate a very delicious soup called in Salah. See that? That's the benefit of kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, she comes from the east and they have their culture, their way of life, and their language. Are you following me now? He comes from the north. Hallelujah. And we have our way of life. Praise God. And now, when you see these three, 
they are ambassadors of their culture. Is that correct? Everywhere they go, when you see someone at, you are in Washington, for instance, and you're going to the airport, and you see someone just proceed, ah, are you a shake? And then you just greet, you know, you just bow there and all of that. I say, ah, you are, you are, you are, that's nice. It's, you are, you are, you are, that's nice. It connects you. Are you following me now? Please, I'm trying to communicate a message. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, as citizens of the kingdom, we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly. Are you listening to me? When you see a Yoruba person, you know instantly. When you see an Igbo person, even if a Yoruba person wears kaftan, his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing. Very quickly, you just know this is a Yoruba person. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? How come there are many Christians and there are few kingdom citizens? It tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have. We have many believers across many churches and many Christians. But the world is still contending whether Jesus is truly king. That means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing Christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see. And let me tell you, the world is not supposed to see different, we are representing different kingdoms. And people ask, I say, who are you, Christian? Who are you, Christian? They say, how come two of you seem to be conflicting? Are you, are you following me? That's why we are taking this teaching. Because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world. The Bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom. There will be something when you, in Bible and, and in ancient time, when you saw a Jew, you would know instantly. By their manner of worship, hallelujah, their dressing, their language and everything. They were revealing that they were Jews. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture. Now, the word culture is not a demonic word. I know that um, in our Nigerian and African context, I know that there are many wrong things with many cultures. All right? There are very healthy sides of culture, respect, love for God. But there are many unhealthy aspects of culture, idol worship, and so on and so forth, allegiance to other gods, and certain unhealthy practices. Hallelujah. But then the kingdom of God has a culture. That's why we sing the song, Your kingdom reigns. You get the song now? Your kingdom reigns. Then we say above all. That means there are other types of kingdoms. But we're saying, Lord, we choose to bring your kingdom above. Hallelujah. So we say, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life. So that when you see me, before you call me a Yoruba person, you should first call me a kingdom citizen. If your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture, then you are not a true representative of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Kingdom advancement. So you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom. You are equipped. He trains you. Hallelujah. And there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom. Hallelujah. Kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things. Number one, the character of the kingdom. Character. You see that we teach about character. There's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now. We have so many anointed people, anointed from head to toe, who lack the character of the kingdom. And our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray. Our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have. That's why we emphasize character. One way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king. Galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit. Bible calls it love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. He said against this there is no law. And so any citizen of the kingdom 
who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character. Suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of hate. Where there is sadness. I love a beautiful song that says, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, make us instruments. Are you following me now? So when you step into a place where there is bitterness, you manifest the joy of the Spirit. So when people see you going through the same thing with them, while they are languishing and complaining, they see you laughing and you're just saying, Lord, you are faithful. And they say, I cannot understand. What is this? You just loved, lost a loved one. And instead of you to be insulting God and talking, you say, Lord, I love you. I love you now. And they cannot understand. I love you tomorrow. I love you forever. Love you. you just hear a bad report from the doctor. And instead of panicking, you say, no, there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in jesus christ the moment jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time I hear your voice number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. That's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom. Disobedience and rebellion. Hallelujah. In the world system, they hail you for disobeying. Hallelujah. As guys, when you disobey people, disobey parents, disobey authority, they say, man. And you're like, hey, you just touch your head. Because it's a system. Are you following me now? It's called cosmos. Let me tell you where it started from. It started from a man in the Bible called Cain. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. He came out from under the governing authority of that king. And the Bible says, Cain built a city, a type of a kingdom, after the name of his son Enoch. And all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system. And then Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose tower will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the same so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in luke chapter 4 when jesus came he began to speak and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth he found where it was written in the book of isaiah isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the holy ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following to preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life
helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why when you walk up to someone who is sick, someone who has cancer, and you say, I bring you the superior power of the kingdom I represent. These are two kingdoms standing. And you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom. And you say, in the name of the king of my kingdom, I'm standing as touching his authority. I command this foreign cancer, go. The cancer going is proof that your king is truly king. That's why miracles, they are called miracles, signs, and wonders. They point somewhere. That's why we hold our miracle services. That's why all of our meetings are power-packed. Many of you who have gone on our Facebook, I'm sure you've, you've seen the great testimony that we have, the latest really that we have right now. Very powerful testimony. Hallelujah. About two or three um, Fridays ago, a woman, not even a believer, hallelujah, came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of God or to make a name for the ministry. All this nonsense that people do. That's why a true servant of God will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom. Are you seeing that? So if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you, then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel. And we have many rebels overseeing many ministries. Standing in the place of Christ. Not allowing many people to come into the kingdom. And not moving themselves. So they have become the Jesuses for many people. But every true servant of God is supposed to be an usher. Leading men to the king. When Paul went to a certain city. And they saw him, he performed great miracles. They called them Zeus and Hermes. The Bible says Paul tore his garment and said, we are but ordinary people. John speaking said that I may decrease so that he, my king, will increase. And any true servant of God, any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number three, prosperity. The subject of prosperity has been a very, very controversial one for two reasons. Number one, people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come. They have tried to use worldly ways to get God's wealth. Hallelujah. And they have been frustrated because it has not come. And so they say, just forget anybody you see blessed, especially young people. Just know that these people are cutting corners, but that's not true. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a says, Cry, yet saying, Thus saith the Lord, My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. That's in your Bible. Cry, yet saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity. So prosperity is a weapon. Listen, many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy. Many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor. That's nonsense. Are you listening to me? Hear me. When you understand the agenda of the king, you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor. Hallelujah. For many of us, our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg. The Bible calls such people rich fools. The issue is not the rich. 
the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade we've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them so it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bail because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but shall don't bow and the man is saying, I must pay the school fees of my children. The Bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. And we say, don't be corrupt. Don't loot. They say, okay, teach me God's way. We say, forget it. Don't loot. And when the man is under pressure, he will sign that document. When the lady is under pressure, she will sign and say to hell with anything. And then we keep looking and say, the ladies are corrupt. The young people are poor. The Bible says the poor, the rich. It didn't say the rich, Christ, the rich will rule over the poor. Are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord <laughs> and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogance. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth. Because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to bear. And we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food. And you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king 
but we are that remnant, that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system. That's why we are teaching what we are teaching. So prosperity is very important. Number four, say language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected. It's called influence. I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what is happening to her. She's happy and enjoying it. Although she cannot understand. This same character or this same attribute is inherent in every Every one of us, including the religious people. I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him. We all desire influence for parents when they call your child. And the first position is... You see the man sometimes trying to package himself. And then he tries to find different ways of accommodating. Come on, am I talking? Help me. How much more the king that you represent? The Bible says the hour has come. John 17 verse 1. It said now the hour has come. It said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. That's how God gets glory. When the sons are glorified. Glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. Are you listening to me? To reveal his glory and his majesty is found in Psalms 145. And the Hebrew word used here is called doxazo, a display of his glory. To let the world know. And let me tell you something. When you come to a position of influence, let me tell you the advantage of influence. The hearts of many are connected to you. And at that point, it's easy to change their hearts. Look at me. Do you know? That if Michael Jackson just lift his hand and say, I get, I'm born again. One over one million people can be born again instantly. That's the power of influence. There are many young people sagging their jeans down, cutting their heads into pieces, trying to look like people who have influence. And the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out. Let me tell you something. If you do not love excellence in your life, you are frustrating the agenda of the king. Because when you are excellent and you are competent, you will gain what we call influence. When you gain influence, you will come to a point where you are a voice. And at that point, anything you say. When Cecilia Ibu was having a Thanksgiving, the number of unbelievers that came for that Thanksgiving, why? Because they need her. They don't love God like that, but they need her. So they had to come. Hallelujah. And I or Richard Jaffa preached his life out. He said, now that I have this caliber of people, let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them. Let me tell you something. There are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you. It's your influence. The Bible says, see it that way man diligent in his business. He said he will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. I was watching the Forbes, Forbes um, first 100 world's richest people. There's no believer in any of them. About 95% of all of them are members of Freemason, Illuminatis. They are the ones who control the education of our children. They are the ones who control everything. Many of you, you know, many believers just say, whatever will be, will be. This world is not our own. We don't love the world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that you are hating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? This is a thought-provoking teaching. It's not just some church activity. It's supposed to compel us to rise up. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, 
because of this platform that God has given us, it has given us a measure of influence. Is that correct? And that's why many of us can come. I would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you. But through the medium of influence, what happens? You can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated. There are six prophetic areas where the world, Satan, has captured. God bless you, Peter. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Many people watch MTV and watch Channel O and we frown. They asked one of the MTV directors one time and said, how come you have influenced children of ages, I think from ages 8 to 16? And he laughed. He said, we have not influenced them. We own them. We own that entire generation. That's what he said. And it's not a lie. They have designed systems. Let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things. Mindset. Say after me, mindset. mindset. The world is a system that gives you a mindset. Are you following me now? So an average child, the moment he grows up, I mean the moment he is born, he is exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset. Let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity. And Satan is using it and advancing his kingdom. Christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade. But there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade, yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom. Number one, sports. Sports is an area where the tower of Babel is being built. Hallelujah. Right now, sport has become a religion. I hope you understand that. There are many people who have made merchandise out of sports. And there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom. Why? Because we have taught people, the moment people begin to sense the anointing, they tell them, Kai, that means one day you stand on the pulpit. Can I surprise you? Hear me. Those you call ministers are those the Bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers. The ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Sports, number two, in the area of arts. Music, fashion. This is an area that the church has neglected. You just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night. And those people have paid their price. They are competent. So people say, so long as they don't mention Satan, I will listen, you know, I like it. You come to church here, it's only in church that you see people sing, no rehearsals, they don't do anything, they just walk, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church. Whenever you hear quality sound, good music, everything, know that it is Satan who is being promoted. And we sit down and watch. And many times we collect offering and say, Lord, let it be for the advancement of your kingdom. What are you saying? The advancement of his kingdom is not theory. Are you getting blessed, please? Because we are going to pray. I'll soon stop here and then. It's a series, so we'll continue. Every time you see excellence, you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies Satan. And you will see levels of excellence and competence. They are sound. They are organized. They are excellent. And they directly promote Satan. But how about it? Mediocrity is the most important thing. The voice doesn't matter. It's just a revelation. I say, Ooh. And the keyboardist for 10 minutes is trying to find the key punching. And then he's smiling. You don't provoke yourself. The Bible says, by the truth. As someone say you are called into fashion. Who do you know in fashion? Let me, I don't know anybody. Oh, okay, one person, Versace. These are the systems you want to conquer, and you do not even know them. Those in the world, the sports people, the media people, those at the forefront of music and fashion, day and night they are building themselves. They sign contracts with Satan, and they keep investing in themselves. You ask them, where are you going? They keep innovating things. Because they live for the glory of Satan. But we have many believers who cross our legs 
and we think God will do everything. And you say, I know one day the top is my portion. You really think so? The top is your portion? How? We don't invest in ourselves. We just come and mumble tongues for one hour. And then we say, my destiny. And then you go to a place and they send you out. They say, no job for you and you are angry. Why will I give you a job where you are not competent? Why should I give you a job where you will make my company lose? Are you, are you, am I provoking somebody? Let me tell you. Whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head, there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the Holy Spirit will give you. Believe what I'm saying. I pray in tongues. But we are the Nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword, but with another hand we keep beauty. So many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and they say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer you say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom Many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians. And then we say, hey, it's happening in Nigeria. It's happening. Where the, it wasn't enacted by angels. It was enacted by human beings. You can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom, not religion, men who understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Another area, business. In the area of business. There are many church folks who've left the business of the people who say, ah, business. Business is such an ugly thing. It's a corrupt thing. Forget, Jare. Swindle you. You see, believers, there's nobody that does clean business. So forget about their tongues. Can't you be the first? Who will not bow? And they are the ones in control of the finances. And they move people wherever they want. Hallelujah. You can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers. And your director can just look at you and say, I don't like you. You are fired. And in an instant, this guy was praying and fasting for a, 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 a boss project. He suddenly changes his prayer point. Oh God, will my life not move forward? And those who have the well do not fear God. They cross their legs and play believers like a chess. Because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom. And the moment they see certain people rise to that area, they stand and preach and say, forget all of the people that are doing this. You will perish with the world. Are we ready for change? If we are, let me tell you, the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit. The next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems. That's the structure of the coming revival. So for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here, one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing God's life. Another area, family. Satan is killing families. We do not understand that that's a system. Can I tell you something? For those of you who are married and are in ministry, or those who soon get married, can I tell you something? Your family comes above and before your ministry. Hello? Before you were born, Christ has been preached. After you die, he will still be preached. When you see an armed robber on the street, he had a father and a mother. Correct? We do not realize that according to God's principle and structure, the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with God's life and the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Sorry, let me have one. Sweetheart, come. Let me use you as an example. Come. Appreciate this beautiful lady. <laughs> Wonderful children of Pastor Williams. Come, sweetheart. Quick, 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 quick. Hallelujah. Now, I've had the opportunity of visiting Pastor Williams' house again and again. And I've seen the kind 
of love and training. You can imagine these little children at their age. At their age, where what were you doing? Some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom. But you can imagine when we say pray, if we are praying for one hour, these children are praying for one hour. When we say speak, imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old. Are you, are you seeing how that family life is important? There are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost. They are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of. Hallelujah. Is the, let me tell you, if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the Lord, don't get married, don't give birth. Are you listening to me? Very important. And that's one area. Satan is perverting the family life like never before. People are losing priorities. And they look at children and when they say, bring this child to church, they look, look and say, ah, ah, little children like this. But these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them. The parents pass and see the children and say, ah, okay, children, say with their little thing. Then one day the child tells you, mommy, I've been the queen of the coast since three years. I'm the queen of the coast. <laughs> queen of what? I thought you were young. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Let me challenge parents here and prospective parents. The word train up a child does not mean discuss with them. It, makes, it means make them do it. If I'm going to church, my child is going to follow me. No matter what the argument is, we'll talk later. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because rebellion, the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. The rod of correction does not mean kill your child. I say, I will kill you. Bring me birth. Bring me birth. And you beat the child. I will match you. I'm the one who will kill you by myself. Before you kill me, I'll kill you. That's not kingdom training. The Bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go. There is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent. You receive it. Manoah said, give us the blueprint of how we will train this child. Hallelujah. Bless this lady. I love you. God bless you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. There are many parents that for your children, the first time they hear, I love you, is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it. And then he comes and says, hey, how are you? I love you. And although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook, she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear. And then she says, I hate you, I hate you. And then in the night she flashes him. And then he flashes her back. Then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again or high then the guy calls yeah, i knew you would call and later on you find out why a nice church going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted because a family where there is no love a family where there is no togetherness a family where the parents are not humble to say i'm sorry when they need to say i'm sorry that kind of a family is not a true picture the first example of god should be seen in a father the first example of the holy spirit should be seen in a mother the first example of unity should be found in the couples. Hallelujah. To train the children in the fear and the admonition of God. I have a dream. That after 20 years of marriage, you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing. No rat race, no fighting up and down. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's what you hear us singing. Because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy. We are adhering to it. Are you getting blessed? I'm provoking something. The last area, media. Right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free. It has already been paid. Satan paid people to prove that Jesus is not Lord. He is still paying people. Hallelujah. You just open any a nice Christian site with a little clip. Five minutes, they say, pay $50. Then they say, I'm not ready. And then somebody say, come and see. I had an encounter with Satan. It's free on YouTube. Watch. 
Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? The media. It's just right now that there's a media revolution. God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mentioned this area, something in your spirit says, are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing. And you envision when you have a congregation of 5,000 members. And then as you are coming, they just bring water for you. And say, daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? Our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems. That's why we are holding this teaching. Hallelujah. But I know we are that generation that the next set of sports people, I look forward to times when before they start playing, while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and, and scoring goals, they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people. And you tell them, I speak under the authority of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. That statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and said, this is my mentor. I'll do anything he's doing. And now that he has mentioned Jesus, what is it about Jesus? And they begin to search and God will lead them to a site and they will check. Jesus is Lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there. And then you read and know. Let me tell you, if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again, in the next 100 years, we will not affect the world. In five minutes, the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the TV. Five minutes, a woman like Oprah Winfrey stands on TV and declares to people that Jesus is not Lord. And in five minutes, I was checking her Facebook and she has six million followers. Six million followers on Facebook. Hallelujah. Coca-Cola has 23 million. And I check many churches. 10, 5, 11, 22, 110. 300, 700, and then a few hundred thousand. Those are the mega ministries. So, can you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So, after you get born again and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you and then he sends you. And then he begins to call you. He says, oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Holmes, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an events planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department doing I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity I'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why I don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church. The mission field is outside the church. It says you are the light of the world, not the church. So we come and we are built. We are equipped. On Monday, you are at work in the bank. And someone comes. And while you are signing the check, you see by the spirit. And he says, sir, you've been having a challenge in your family. And he looks. And then you tell him, I bring you the word of the Lord. I know that you're having a financial problem. Begin to tithe and be serious. Tithing is a principle of the kingdom. 
and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say God bless you the king has found expression <laughs> hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government will say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say it to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we are just thinking of how we we'll chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba kabarata ba 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 ba. I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can I do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster Jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be Joshua Selman International Ministries. We like names and we like titles. We don't think kingdom. Unbelievers think kingdom. Everywhere they go, their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression? He said, when you pray, say this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. I've made up my mind that everywhere I go, the kingdom will find expression. Ejimi makes shirts. Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. 
this is an artistry and the creativity of one he is a minister but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give god glory hallelujah we believe in it i'm being practical and i'm sharing this dial is going for a, a a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country hallelujah he's going for a training he's the head of the media but it's not just about praying in tongues we realize that we have an agenda we are going we are invading the media and so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks certified every one of these media people you see them doing what they are doing they were trained because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a place a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we're not just praying in tongues are you following me now we're on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you not all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with Steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and God would give him songs and then he would write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day God will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it I look forward to times when when we tune our radio 
we just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for Hillsong. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested. It's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there. And we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it. But let me tell you, it's in you. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. We are rising. Our parents, like the Eli generation, have done their best. And they are transferring the button to the Samuels. And we will carry it and represent the kingdom. A time will come, they will come and meet you. And someone will want to bribe you. And you hold back his hand. And not just say, no, I don't do it. You say, no, I represent a kingdom. Don't just say, I don't do it. Someone comes to meet you and says, can you come to my hotel? Say, no, I don't do it. What you are just trying to say is that uh, I don't do it with you. You must let the person know that I represent a kingdom and I'm bounded by a modus operandi. And part of it is that we are not engaged in this. I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him. Hallelujah. Ejimi does designs. When you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. Ha. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time. At that time, we will gather on Sundays and pray. And every time we are praying, although they do not understand what we are saying, they cannot deny the effect. It's telling on their salaries. It's telling on the economy. You come and meet someone working in your office. And like Joseph, the person is depressed. And he said, what happened? He said, I was just told I have cancer. And he said, come with me. As the manager of the company said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cancer, go. And the person is healed. And he said, I thought it's only in church. And he says, to let you know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Hmm. Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise. Arise. It's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down. The call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility. We are going to pray. We are out of time. We will continue the next time. I will be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom. I really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom. Now you see that it's beyond just getting born again. Rise up on your feet. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all.
responsibility to directly promote the government of heaven in your class, in your job. You have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace. There shall be no end. How much of the king are you representing? How much of his glory are you directly representing? Come on, pray. Pray. So God to pray hear me hear me you're going to pray one prayer and say lord i receive grace to be competent hear me many of us right now from this meeting go and buy books go and buy dvds that address the area you know god has called you sit down and walk there's room for laziness generals are not lazy people lift up your voice and pray I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. Advance the 
voice of his kingdom. Make sure you are singing this song as a prophetic revelation. Confidence in God. 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 Confidence in There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army. To break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army, there's an army rising up. Ah, ba la 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 la. Rising up. There's an army rising up. Don't break every chain. Lift your hands, everyone. Shikapatatabaladaba. Lift your hands. Sikaparende kabaladaba shikatai. Mande krada la pako prondus kobali kariada. Zete parata parikatai. Zekatere potsukotoi. Shikelepo sataya. Keep your hands lifted up. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to be touching men, touching women. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. From the front to the back. The power of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens when we worship. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is breaking limitations. The Lord is breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. 
Breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. Hallelujah. 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 Please hold your hands all across the building. In the next five minutes, we are going to pray in tongues. The Lord is doing something in this place tonight. I began to sense this right from the morning. Hold your hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray. Instrumentalists, don't stop praying. We are going to pray in tongues. Listen, within these five minutes, there will be a bursting. Something will break open. As you pray, for many of us, there will be a release of very deep spiritual virtues. This is not just ordinary prayer. Trust me. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Zembro dos cobran de calabasa tapacata, racata pocoto pocoto papa papa papa, de baca parete capaba. The Bible says, while they prayed, the Holy Ghost said unto them, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas. Lord, as we pray tonight, let there be impartations, let there be openings, openings of portals. Openings of vessels. Pray, pray. Soto ke te ke te ke pakata. Bambra te ke te poko so prekete. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Ke te baka pra te ke te. Se te la pariada pakata ya. The Holy Ghost is engaging your spirit man. The Holy Ghost is engaging your spirit man. Right to the back. Make sure you pray. Spiritual doors are opening. Spiritual doors are opening. I see spiritual doors opening. Spiritual doors are opening. Access, access, access. Access is being given to men. Access to deep spiritual things. Access, access is being given to men. Access in the spirit. Access in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. He told Jacob, for as a prince, you have fought with God and prevailed. Shatata pakara baba bakata, rakata protoko topo lodo bos, shakata kata, rakata pakoto bos, manta prata kata, lekata prosko to prokotos, embrakata baba baba baba. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Let's get 
the voices.
Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. This is koinonia, an experience of intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's a family that has been on my mind. I don't know if they are here. The family with the... Is it the mad person now? Or the... Are they here? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We're in for an experience tonight. I began to see this right from the morning. I'm telling you, chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. I still hear this in my spirit. Chains are breaking. 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 Shabba Oh, let the chains break. Every chain over everyone here. Every chain. Every chain, every chain, every assault of darkness, every chain by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every chain, every chain, every chain is broken right now. Chains of habits, chains of limitations. person please confirm is where's the family that there was a there are people that spoke to me about someone they are not here someone who got mad or psychosomatic it's not a word of knowledge there is a family that i'm supposed to minister to here okay if they are not around that's okay why are you here your brother your elder brother what's wrong with him come How many years? Seven years. Where is he? At home. I'll pray the Lord will use you as a point of contact. Lord Jesus, let your power touch the brother, even through him, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me many ladies with abdominal pain. Just place your hand there right now. The Lord is showing me many people, especially ladies. Hallelujah. I'm just going to rebuke it and I see like, like they look like guns, but it's fire, literal fire. It will live and it will hit you and that's the end of it. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Right now, I cause that pain. Go now. Go now. 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 Every devil of darkness responsible for every pain, I cause you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be healed right now. Be healed. The power of God is healing them right now. Right now. Right now. You may not even know right now. The sign is that it will touch you. It must touch you. You can't stand on your feet. If you are part of this list, it will touch you. That's what the Lord is showing me. I cause that pain. I cast that spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Everyone lay your hand on your chest. The Lord is going to rebuke blood conditions right now. Blood conditions. Blood conditions. Blood conditions. All those who are part of it, there will be this same fire. It will come upon you in a mighty way. It's a sign that you are the one God is touching. This is not something vague. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Right now, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, blood conditions, I speak to you. All those affected, may the fire of God set you free. Now. 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 Now the power of God is touching people. Right now. Right now. I curse that devil. I curse that devil. I curse that devil. I curse that devil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I see visions of the spirits of infirmity. Living people. Living people. Living people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. The Lord is showing me two ladies and I'm seeing a guy. You have a problem with sleeping. You don't sleep. No matter what happens, you don't sleep. You just stay awake and sleep never comes. Where are they? Two ladies I see the Lord showing me. Please, let's save time. And one guy. Please save time if, if, if you are the one just so that save us all of the time. How long has it been? Huh? Six months. How about you? Huh? I'm seeing your hands chain. Your own situation. There's, there's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. There's still one more lady. There's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. Hallelujah. Come, I have to pray for you. Yours is more than a sleep problem. Hold my hands. I cast this chain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go right now. And I break by the power of the Holy Spirit. This spirit that causes you not to sleep. You are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. How many months? Six months. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free right now. You will begin to sleep normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is touching someone's ear right now as I speak. The Lord is touching someone's ear. You will literally feel as though a cotton bud is put in your ear. And all of a sudden, it will open up and become clearer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing a lady of a breast lump. You began to see this. You've not even shared it with many people. Breast lump is living right now. Right now. Dissolving and going back to hell. Never to return to you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are four people. Listen. There are four families that as I speak right now, the angel of the Lord is going to their homes and is causing major breakthroughs. Listen, listen. It's not, it's not just prophecy for everybody. Four exact people. One, there are four of them. Two, the angel of the Lord literally, 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 is entering these homes and they are receiving dramatic breakthroughs dramatic breakthroughs the Lord is showing me over 10 people and I see academic chains this is what I see 10 people 10 people 
and this is not your fault. Ten people. I'm going to begin to count one to ten. And goodness, it's like fire. Fire, fire. I cast those spirits. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. I cast those chains. I cast those chains. I cast those chains. It comes to an end. I tell you, it comes to an end. That chain breaks now and forever. It comes to an end. Hallelujah. Let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing. If this is all he does tonight, that's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing two eyes in the spirit. And God wants to open up at least 19 people here in the realm of visions and supernatural experiences listen right now in the name of jesus christ prophetic fountains those eyes in the spirit shake it out at least 19 people at least 19 people Shataka bariata, fire, physical fire coming upon your eyes. Physical fire coming upon your eyes. Open them up, oh God, to these dimensions of supernatural revelations. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And God wants to cause barrenness from two families. Now. Two families right now. Just two families. Father, wherever these families are represented right now, let your power visit and set them free now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, this row. All of you here, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. From the front, right to the back, there are people that God again is visiting their families. Families, families. God is bringing breakthrough. Right now, right now. Just this row, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let those families, let the angel of the Lord, there are angels walking through this crowd right now, right now, right now, in the name that is above all names, angels of the Lord walking to families, performing specific miracles, specific miracles, specific miracles, specific miracles. Madonna, hey. hello, Kim Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, 
Joaquin Madonna. Hallelujah. I cast that spirit from this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands. There are some devils that need to leave this place right now. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. God is bringing mighty deliverance for people now. Every service is miracle service. Are you getting my point now? We're going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I'm telling you, major deliverances that will bring breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. The symbol. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name. I command every devil and every spirit, every act of witchcraft and divination in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, they must come out of their hiding places and go never to return. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Reposhekete. I cause devils now. I cause spirits now. I cause spirits, every wicked spirit out of God's people, out of every family. Now, I break spells. I break witchcraft. I break the power of divination. Bring them out. Bring them out. I cost that power. It's not just them. Families. They are families. I set fire. 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 Upon altars. I set fire. I set fire. Upon Hallelujah. Lift your hands again. God is visiting families. This is not about you. All the people here are representing families. Lift your hands. Oh, the fire of God must fish them out. There is no hiding for any spirit. Shh. At the count of three, you will shout that name at the top of your voice. And a sword of the spirit will go to your family. There must be deliverance tonight. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Hallelujah. The Bible says, How awe-inspiring are your ways. It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. All the people you see here, they are representing their families. God is stepping into families. Those doors must be open. I see ancient gates in the spirit. Ancient gates. And I'm about to command them to open. Listen. When I command those gates to open, 
those affected you will feel it physically these are the gates that cause limitations over people and families but in the name that is above all names I come tonight under this apostolic and prophetic anointing I command you be open. I command you be open. Any family, lift your hands, that is tied down by any kind of limitation. I don't care what it is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if that spirit has survived anywhere else, in this place, this is the mount of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command those doors open now. I command those doors open now. Doors of breakthrough be 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 open now. By the force of the spirit, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it, shout it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that every force stopping the advancement of my family by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Live now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every power, you must do it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pick up your Bibles, Daniel chapter 10. The devil is in trouble tonight. Daniel chapter 10. You have come for koinonia. It's an experience. It's a mountain. Something must change about your life. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 10. And behold. And hand touched me. And set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not. Daniel had been fasting and praying. 
He said, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come to thee for thy words, verse 13. But the prince, listen, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, and lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Listen, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then it says, against principalities, against powers, then against rulers, then against spiritual wickedness. They do not operate in the earth realm. The Bible says they operate in the heavenlies. This prince of Persia was the territorial spirit across the land of Persia. So when Gabriel was bringing the answer, the solution, that prince stopped him. I have been put in charge of this territory to make sure that breakthrough does not come to men. To make sure that men are not lifted. But there was a man in the earth realm who kept praying. And while he prayed, it was on the strength of his authorization. The, from the arsenals of heaven, the archangel Michael had to come. Because he's the archangel in charge of war. We are going to pray tonight. Every land has territories. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every land has territories. And there are spirits. Those of you who have listened to the message, give me this mountain. There is a spiritual dimension to life. And there are, met, there are certain things that will never manifest in your life until you prevail in prayer. Jacob held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. He said, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He said, your name will be changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. And you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you what we just read was the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when you pray, it just comes. It, 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 it makes... Listen, the kingdom of God is a system. The earth realm is a system. Are you getting my point? It is as soon as Zion travails, hallelujah, that she will put forth. There is a birthing. This is the ninth month. If you didn't come to pray tonight, I'm so happy about the rain. Because you won't go anywhere. We are going to pray. Ah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? Yes, we are going to pray. Listen. We are going to confront powers. Zechariah chapter 1, please, quickly. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Zechariah chapter 1. Verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw, and I beheld what? Four horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. Next verse. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? What are these horns? And he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. These are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. These are the horns that are making your father to never reconcile with your mother. These are the horns that make finances to stop when it's about to come. These are the horns hindering the gates of marriage. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Zembra koto then I said, what come this to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. These are the horns that have robbed you of your testimony, of your joy. He said, so that no man does what? Lift up his head. They have put a barrier around your family and your life. And they have said, no man will lift up his head. So every time you want to lift up your head, there are horns. They station, hear me, and take seriously what I'm saying. 
They have drawn the boundaries. Man takata. Goodness. I tell you, I sense deliverance fire in this place tonight. Oh, those horns must leave. For sure. There are horns stationed across territories to make sure that men do not rise. Some of you, this is a limitation. You are the first person in your family to get to the university. There are horns. But tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to step out and put on our priestly regalia. We are going to confront the heavens he told Job, he said, Has thou commanded thy morning? Did you speak into the heavenly territories? Did you command the things to align themselves? We're praying tonight. The Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. She was a warrior, and the constellations arranged themselves to make sure that enchantments could not go to the heavens. Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on now. You have to be more serious than this. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. That every power. Across my territory. That wants to stop me. And stop my family. From rising, up, from rising up, I challenge you tonight, challenge you tonight. By, the by the blood of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. <laughs> That Satan is interested in this body that you wear. Jude 1. Everyone read. Want to read. Hold on. Do you see Michael again? Michael in Daniel. Contending against powers. He shows up again in the book of Jude. Read on. Want to read. Hold on. He disputed about the what? Spirit, soul, body. Satan wanted the body of a man. Satan wants the bodies of men, not just their spirits. Because without a body, without a body, demonic activities cannot be carried out. The church is called the body that the Holy Ghost uses. 
It's called the body of Christ. The body that the Holy Ghost wears. There is a law in this realm. That any spirit that does not have a body cannot function in this realm. So Satan wants the body of Moses. If he looked for the body of Moses, Moses in the Old Testament, how much more your own body? So he will afflict you. He wants your body. So he will manipulate your body and all kinds of objects moving around. But the Bible says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not. Listen. We are going to pray. I'm establishing a prayer point. Jesus entered the temple, which was his body, and he found out that there were strangers in that temple. Are you getting my point now? Those who should be in the temple were not there. And he found people doing business in the temple. There were transactions going on in his body. That's the same way Satan carries out all kinds of transactions in human bodies. And you hear people complaining. Objects are moving in my body. You see people sleep in the night. And all kinds of devilish things come to oppress them. Tonight we are going to pray. Are you getting my point? Please if you are sitting except you are under the anointing stand up. And let's take some time to pray. You must get angry tonight and let's pray. Because something must break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I, declare I declare that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body belongs to Jesus. Therefore, every strange spirit attempting to hold on to my body I command you right now depart from my body now lift your voice and pray every stranger Hallelujah. Everywhere the gospel was preached, Jesus demonstrated that he was not only interested in the spirits of men, but their bodies. Yes, what healing does to your body is what salvation does to your spirit man. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the root of sickness. I want you to get ready because the devil is in trouble. There's fire burning in this place this night. No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake in the name of madness. Are you getting what I'm saying? No matter how stupid a man is, in his insanity, he knows fire when he sees it. The Bible says he maketh his ministers wings. Are you getting my point? And his messengers flames, flames of fire. 
every stranger in your body is about to leave. I don't care what it is called. Sickness is that. Let me tell you how you know that these things are demonic. Because many of us, when you pray on it, it will go. And then later on it will return. Right? You are a lady, they pray for you. And then for one or two or three months, you find out that your period just comes normally. No pain, no nothing. And then in the fourth month, it backfires again. There are people, recurrent headache, all kinds of devils. A growth comes and then it goes. You pray and try to treat it, it goes. We are going to set it on fire right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, know ye not that your body. I showed you from the book of Jude. Satan was fighting with Michael over the body of Moses. Hallelujah. This body is your legal access for living and functioning in this realm. If it is battered beyond repair, your spirit will no longer be able to stay there and it will have to leave. So if Satan cannot get to manipulate your mind, he will batter your body in a way that your spirit cannot live and it will have to go. We are going to pray. Many of us, as you are praying right now, you will be surprised. Huh? Now is the time to pray all those. Hold on, please, one minute. Genotype. Huh? I've read my Bible from Genesis. Please listen. This is very serious what I'm sharing. There's no mention of any nonsense of genotype in this Bible. Have you read your Bible? There are many ladies right now, many guys, they cannot even get married. They can't think of anything because the devil put one rubbish embargo called genotype. S, S, A, S and all of those rubbish. Now you want to get married or you want to settle down, they tell you no. Health wise, every parent is carrying their child and running away. The devil is in trouble tonight. We are going to pray. If he was not here, he should not be in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying. Whatever has affected this body has affected God's property. And we are going to pray. And invoke his presence that he will rise in his jealousy. And attack any stranger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you as you pray, growth will disappear. See, the trouble is that many of us have been praying. But we, we of course I know not here. But generally, we, we do not know the power of the corporate anointing. Psalm 133 talks of God depositing the blessing where people are gathered together in unity that's different from your personal prayer life are you getting my point now we are going to pray there are traits of infirmities around your family there are traits of infirmity in your life there are many of us all sorts of embarrassing conditions skin problems to the minutest to anything hear me no matter how small it is it is according to your faith tonight. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, whatever my father has not planted, whatever he has not planted, it must be uprooted. Don't sit down and tolerate it. What you tolerate in your body, the devil will use it to destroy you. But when you resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee. Lift up your voice. We are going to pray again. Say after me in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness, every infirmity, every abnormality in my body, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to leave this body now. I command you to leave this body now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. What is 
Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Joel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 23. Joel 2, verse 23. One to read. Verse 24. Verse 25. Shout it with all your heart. Shout it. Listen, listen, listen. We are still praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Based on the word of God. I place demand. For restoration. In my life. In my family. Hallelujah. We are going to pray that prayer again. You know the areas you want restoration. Please we are not playing games tonight. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah. When we get to that party, we will mention it. And we are going to pray. The Bible says, I will. It didn't say, I will send someone. I will supervise your restoration. Hallelujah. The years. We are going to say, Lord, turn the hands of time again. Turn the hands of time. Let that which the devil has stolen be restored. There are things that need to be restored tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive sevenfold, restoration sevenfold restoration of everything the devil has stolen in my life. Now mention them. Your health, whatever it is. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, 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 oh,
Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him thanks. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because our eyes will see the desires of our hearts and our hands will handle it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Just give me 10, 15 minutes and we're out of here. If this is all we have done tonight. It is worth it. There's no place for you to sit, stand, sit on the floor, sit anywhere. Go ahead. The service is already on. So, Please, there should be no vacant seat. There are still people standing. The person is under the anointing. Let the person lie down on the floor and let someone use the seat. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what the word of God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. It's not even knowing that there is a kingdom principle. That's not revelation. Revelation is knowing how to make that principle work in your life. If it cannot work in your life, then it's useless. Hallelujah. See, we keep sharpening ourselves like this, like arrows in the presence of God we are sharpening ourselves because we are trusting God to attain a statue in the spirit where no power in existence can stop your fulfilling God's destiny for your life you believe that there is a generation that is depending upon our faithfulness the Bible says he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption and he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal we're making investments in the spirit we're laboring we're traveling you won't be surprised when you see your life and your prophetic destiny tomorrow because you will know that yes it is God's grace but Paul said it this way I am what I am by the grace of God. Right? But he said, this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. There is grace that manifests as the favor of God. And there is grace that manifests as supernatural empowerment to do. Hallelujah. The Lord is changing your life. I'm telling you. Gradually. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept, your value system, your life, the quality of your Christian experience is changing. And then like the 71 day, he will trust you with responsibilities. He will send you and you will be shocked to see that he has built you to be his finest. The finest of the finest of the best. Don't trivialize what God is doing in your life, brothers and sisters. Week after week, you're submitting yourself to the dealings of the Spirit. And it will translate into something in your life. You may not look like it now. See that? There is no athlete 
Who wants to look good when you are rehearsing? Have you seen an athlete like that? You are conscious of your shoe. Let it not have mud. No, 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 no. When, when you are training, you will see footballers get dirty and all of that. But when they lift that trophy, huh? they can now dress and enjoy the celebration. My Bible tells me that no man that warreth will entangle himself with civilian affairs. These trainings will prune you. It will, it, will, it will build you. Listen to me. It will challenge you. It will stretch you. It will provoke you. But when you submit to the dealings of the spirit, the end of it is peace. Something will happen in your life that money cannot buy. Something will happen in your life that is not common. You will now know that it is not common to be yielded to the spirit. It's not a gift. Not everybody is interested. There are many people who are born again. But very few people are interested in the things of the spirit. And so God is teaching us. We spend time now to pray. And travel in the spirit. You cannot imagine the levels of victory. And so you would just step home. And you see that doors begin to open. And some of you, your loved ones will not know. They will just say, aha, things are working well now. Things don't just work. They are enforced in the spirit. Learn this. Learn this. Learn this. One day it will change. It's a waste of time. Time does not change things. Are you getting me? Engaging kingdom principles. 38 years. That man was at the pool of Bethesda. In less than five minutes, he got up. He would have remained there forever. So the word of God that you are receiving, you must believe it. Please hear me. You must believe it. If you're just sitting down and watching every week and just looking and hoping that this word will make sense one day, you may be deceiving yourself. The Bible says, ever learning. Have you seen people like that? They have all of the revelation, but never coming to the comprehension of the truth. Depart from those kinds of people. When you come into the presence of God, give your heart. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it gives you an assurance. What's the assurance? That thy profiting may appear. Look, let me tell you. Um, you see, if your life does not bear fruit after a particular time, you will be frustrated. Because it's God that sees the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Men do not have the ability to see the heart. So your Christian experience must translate into a testimony that glorifies the name of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it does not, your family members will never see the relevance of your commitment to prayer and to the study of the word, the disciplines and the constraints of the spirit. Say, my life will bear fruit. Say it, my life will bear fruit. Brothers and sisters, if you go to your house and there is a sick person and you have a revelation and you pray for that sick person, stand up, my brother, and you pray for that sick person and the sick person stands up, do you know that that is a sermon that is more than one year of beckoning up? You don't need to invite people and say, come for God. No, 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 no. The woman, at the, Samar the Samaritan woman said, come and see a man that has told me everything I've done. What is the result in your life that compels people to want to know about God? If your life continues to remain a barren wilderness, there is no reason why people should be attracted to your God. There was something that Ruth saw and she told Naomi. He said, my, your God will be my God. Hallelujah. It's not just for you to come and watch a man of God doing great things. No. It's to provoke your spirit and you go back with that anointing. You're not falling down for nothing. Say, I'm anointed. Say it. Some of you are even laughing at yourself. Say it. It has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with being alive. Hallelujah. 
and you step into your house you step into your place of work and you step in as an ambassador as an envoy don't let people mock your emoji emoji for nothing emoji emoji they keep calling you when there's trouble they pass you you are emoji as a nickname no emoji you say yes and they pass you and, and you are not contributing anything to the kingdom Elisha said hi I love that guy he said let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel hallelujah that there is a prophet in Israel can the devil look at your family and say ah if, if only I can shift Zuera out of the way and like a big hen you stay there and say you are invited I have become a shield he said as for me and my house for many of us it's as for me and myself it must translate beyond you are you getting my point you shield others you are minding your business and you see the devil trying to oppress somebody you say satan is my business it's my business whether you invite me or not it is my business you must let this person go hallelujah listen it's not enough for you don't get used to seeing miracles healings deliverances you know in Koinonia, we are so used to miracles. When it happens, you just watch one of those things that's happened again. You see, it's a lesson. It's a handwriting upon your life. Are you hearing me? That God is challenging you and telling you that your life ought to be supernatural in every way. Not just by making noise and disturbing people when they are sleeping, praying in tongues. No, it must translate. It says, let your light so shine before who? Before yourself? Before men. You already know you have the light, but they do not know. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. And as a result, praise your Father in heaven. When was the last time someone spoke to you about his situation and you said, that's all right. That's all right. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you picked up your phone. You said, let's pray. Many of us, is just, hey, yeah. See, I just returned from Koinonia. It was powerful this night. Ah! You missed. And Ben said, I'm, I'm having a little stomach ache. Said, oh, it's like that. Let's, let's just lie down. It's too late. The chemist is closed. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. You need to get angry one day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As soon as you get home, you hear your sister saying, finally, my name came out. They are about to, to downsize me and, and, and do all of that. And you say, oh, I'm sure that God knows how he will work things out. Look at what you are saying. You are the ambassador. You are the voice of God in that room. You must die. One of the things I've learned, listen to me. One of the things I've learned about working in the anointing is that you must die to your ego. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of us are so conscious. What if I, I tell the people God will bless you and God doesn't bless them? Tomorrow they will now see me and say, Pastor, that prayer, you know people are so funny. Pastor, you prayed and the prayer didn't work. Oh. And you feel stupid, you feel embarrassed. If I do well, God should take the glory. If nothing happens, who should take the shame? I, I, answer me. Who should take the shame? So if you are taking the shame, you have been Hallelujah. Go and pray for the sick person. Pray. Let the person die in your hands. No problem. Just pray. You now go and find out what is wrong with you. And then the person says, there's, there's one wound. If I open it, you say, ah, you wouldn't have even told me. Look, just quietly go to the hospital. Oh. Challenge your faith. Hallelujah say me i'm not a man of god's wife i want peace i don't want to trouble satan let him know take away you see i believe that our mindsets are changing that mindset of i don't trouble you satan don't trouble me too let's all mind our business it does not work in this earth realm are you getting what i'm saying it does not work in the earth realm 
there are many of us i will not be surprised that there are some of us who sit down like that you believe that because you are not active in the things of the kingdom when the devil comes he will jump you and go and look for those who are really causing him trouble and he said the devil pass please pass i don't have anything i didn't look for any trouble it doesn't work that way satan does not disturb you because you have become a slave to him right but you must you must tear down the assaults of the devil over the lives of people say one more time i'm anointed say it i'm anointed the holy ghost just took over this meeting let's just flow with the way he's i'm anointed look at your hands everyone look at your hands i know you have been insulting it that it doesn't look nice forget about all those ones look at your hand whatever you have there is your hand whether it's rough or smooth it's irrelevant just look at your hand i'm talking about the spiritual the spiritual content i like you to say my hands represent the hands of jesus they carry the anointing of the holy spirit they can produce results and work wonders do you believe that this is god bless you this is my mentality this is my mentality my hands are not just for eating no it's, there is there is something upon my hands jesus has placed his hands upon my own hands many of us we keep falling down and rising but we are not blessing anybody i want to ask you a few questions just a few minutes and then we'll round up listen how many of us believe we are anointed we just said we're all anointed the question i have for you tonight is who has your anointing brought to the kingdom has your anointing been able to save anybody i once was lost huh come brother that this brother was lost and on the strength of the anointing that you have whether it was to save him to get him healed he has now come into the saving knowledge of the kingdom if your anointing listen i'll tell you why many people do not see more of the anointing in their life they want anointing and the first question is for what what do you want it for so you'll be speaking and people will fall down if that is your definition of the anointing if that is your scope you know especially the youth we like power and, and there's nothing wrong with it you like the fact that you just sit down and say i'm speaking some of you while i was talking and things were happening you were it was as if you were pouring cold water in your body calm down the lord is speaking to you right now calm down if there is no passion in your heart to see his kingdom come I am telling you now you do not need the anointing and you shall receive dunamis acts chapter 1 verse 8 please project it for us and you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power is to an end it says and you shall be what witnesses witnesses who is a witness who is a witness if tosin slaps this gentleman and i saw it what do you call me a witness if we go to the court i said tosin really slap. i saw it so i'm a witness the holy ghost makes you a witness you were not there when jesus died are you are you getting what i'm saying you were not there when jesus died were you there you were not there on the cross but now you are standing to represent a message that you were not there physically so the holy ghost says at least i was i was i was there i was not in jesus on the cross but i was around i saw everything let me partner with you you do the talking and then i will prove that you are not a liar are you getting what i'm saying so you tell the sick that jesus has healed you all of this rubbish sickness is over and the holy ghost says yes i was there on the cross by his stripes this guy has been healed and you stretch forth your hands and the holy ghost validates that your claims are true everyone say i'm a witness but the, the challenge is that many of us are not witnesses indeed 
you have roommates, you have people in your workplace, and there's no transformation. No transformation. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. Hallelujah. I may not have time to talk so much about it, but I, I, I really wanted to talk extensively on soul winning tonight when God just took over. We give him praise. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Because at least he visited people and he blessed people. But the question I have for us is that who is coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because of the investment of the Spirit upon your life? There are many of us who are the only ones who are born again in our family. There are many of us, you leave people gisting and you get up and carry your Bible and come for koinonia. And you are happy. Again and again, we've had people here, especially students, when they're in their final year, some of them get to find out about koinonia. It's not like they do not know. But for many people, the God of this world has blinded their minds. They don't care. Are you getting my point? And some of us just sit down, we just watch. And the devil keeps destroying these lives and then at a point where they have two or three weeks to get out of zaria then they come and you see them crying and wondering and getting angry with you and you say sorry it's okay now and then you don't do anything about it again the lord is speaking to us do you know why many ministries let me be sincere with you do you know why many ministries are small small in terms of membership and small in terms of impact look at every ministry that there is a rich investment of the ministry of the holy spirit they are committed to turning many into righteousness right and transforming lives why should i want the holy ghost in my life why should i want his anointing when i'm not interested in praying for the sick right when i'm not interested in 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 seeing people set free you see the church has reduced anointing to money hello hello and many of us are already becoming victims of this theology our concept of anointing is just power to prosper so i have the anointing meaning i have the anointing to prosper financially so you buy the car you buy the clothes, you build the house, you do everything, and you say, I'm anointed. If you have ever doubted my anointing, look at the fruits of my anointing. Car, house. Will car go to heaven? Answer me. Will house go to heaven? Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. We must begin to live having the passions of God in our heart. There are many of us here we used to be committed to genuine evangelism genuine evangelism and we are allowing this this demonic wave of complacency in the church to just come around there are many churches i say this with all apology and due respect they cannot even remember the last time they made an altar call and they don't care correct they don't care to an extent that we can preach and look at many evangelical meetings and crusades right now on the crusade ground is money they are raising and doing miracles as great as that is the end of all of these things is to see a soul not just saved in terms of the religiosity saved but lives transformed every society is a reflection of the quality of the mindsets that are there this is why we are passionate and committed. We do everything that we do week in, week out to make sure that souls are saved and lives are transformed. You will notice that I've almost not missed any koinonia meeting. No matter where I am, no matter where I am, I try to make sure that Friday I am back. You know why? Because this work is my primary assignment. Any external ministration is just an extension of the apostolic impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But this is the core. And some of you are pastors. Let me talk to you. Or some of you are men of God. You have your church. You are in a year. You will only preach once or twice. And members are just sitting down and being confused. 
under different kinds of messages and theologies everybody coming with his i believe in the corporate impute of the body but the man the one that god has put as a shepherd you must stay and build the people you are constructing an ideology and it must be sustained so that the people are built in that ideology so that they won't be tossed through and fro by every junk and every wind of doctrine there are some things when some of you hear now you won't even pray about it is that true on account of what you have known the word of god comes to build you but when it builds you it creates a sense of responsibility you can't just be falling for nothing and then you stand up and you just clean your body and when you are going you say guy I fell today again. Oh. I've been falling the last three weeks. This person said, me too. Oh. This thing, I don't know how it works. That's not the goal. It's not a thing to just, it's, it's, it's for you. How many of you here have, have sat down to say, look, bring 5,000, bring 5,000. Let's make a very serious tract. A tract that is well edited and, and has the kingdom, not religion. Say, I don't have a ministry. You don't need a ministry. You need passion. You see, that's the mindset we all have. Huh? We believe that for impact to ever happen, you must have a ministry. So three friends come together, they bring the 5,000 5, and say, come, let's settle this. Who is the Jew of this group? Who is the real Jew? If they sow a seed now, who does it go to? That is to be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. That's, that's really what carnality is. That you are already that see judas was not a bad person judas was a carnal person he looked at jesus and he had a business idea the name of his business idea was jesus how he can use jesus christ and make money that was all that was why he didn't even use the money he thought that when they come to catch jesus christ he would do his majestic thing again when he found out that that thing had backfired he died he killed himself How many of us here we are on Facebook? Some of us, some of us are on Twitter, some of us are, and we well, not 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 many. I say this for the sake of those who will be listening to the message. There are many of us, it's just rubbish. If you are happy today, everybody will know on Facebook that you are happy. Joyful, the sun is shining. Tomorrow, if you are angry, this world, what a dark place. Your whole your whole emotional life on display, idleness. We don't live with the consciousness of the kingdom. As you are laughing, please take seriously what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Yet we want to see the glory of God in our lives. What is wrong with using your post and say, Lord, I may not be a man of God. I may not have the power to heal the sick now, but I commit myself. Is that true? To making sure that every week one soul is saved. I must come for koinonia with somebody. Sister, how has your beautiful face translated into soul winning in the kingdom? Let me talk to ladies. Your beauty is either bringing people into the kingdom or taking people out of the kingdom. Is that true? There's nothing as neutral. So the brother sees you and says, Sister, you are very fine. Say, we give glory to the, the name of the Lord. I'm inviting you. Let me use this opportunity and invite you if you are afraid of talking to the person about jesus christ some of us once they just say you are beautiful they just say ah let me not bring jesus into it as if jesus is putting sugar inside food you know it's as if let me let me savor this moment now it doesn't come every day let me enjoy it jesus stay away let me not bring any religiosity and then the lord watches you from the throne and says you pray you want a ministry you want a ministry where you are everywhere. You want an international ministry and God sees your heart. And he knows that there are some levels of the anointing. If we give this person, you are going to be a disaster to the kingdom. And he measured a thousand cubits. That man was there. Until he proved that he was faithful. Then another thousand cubits was measured. There are some of us, even if you fast for 100 days, I am telling you, more anointing will not come until you step up your passion and your and your reckless abandon for the things of the kingdom we're afraid of being looked at as being fanatical right so many of us 
I'm not a man of God. Please, please. I can, I can sow seed. You know, there's this theology people teach. There are those who give. There are those who preach. Many people say I'm in the category of the givers. No, everybody is in all three categories. You must give. You must pray. You must preach. Hallelujah. Don't just say me, I'm a giver. And then, because the man of God really needs money desperately, he said, you are doing the same thing with me. You who is giving me and preaching is all the same thing. It's true that it's the same thing, but if it's the same thing, it means you can switch. It's still the same thing. Preach to! Who has changed because of you? How many of us does your presence judge sin and iniquity? Listen to what I'm saying. Does your presence, I'm not talking of condemnation, right? I'm not talking of condemning people and just writing people off. That's, 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 that's something else. That's a theology that came from hell. But does your presence judge sin and iniquity truly? That someone wants to do something bad and your presence is an inconvenience to the person. For some of us, your presence is a, is a catalyst. Let's say, hey, thank God you have even come, sir. No. And then let me not even, let me not just bypass this. How many of us have truly made up our minds to part with iniquity? Listen, listen. Please do not ever think that there is a way of negotiating your way into intimacy with God. If you really want authentic power, iniquity must be far from you. When I talk of iniquity, you, you know what I'm talking about. It must be far. Don't say it does not matter. Don't say it does not matter. I'm repeating it. You must hear me. Don't say it does not matter. You will never walk in authentic power. That's why a lot of people cast out demons. The demons cast them too. Because they know that Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. We joke around with the issue of sin and iniquity in the body of Christ. And then we believe that because God is gracious, right? Iniquity is what will give Satan access to your life, your state of heart. Iniquity is not just sleeping around or drinking and smoking they are fruits of that iniquity iniquity is a state of heart that is perpetually rebellious towards god and the laws of the kingdom the psalmist said if i cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not have heard me who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart when there are still Christians giving bribe and taking bribe, you will never see the hand of the Lord. Don't say it does not matter. You want job. Somebody saying bring 250,000 and you are happy. Say it's like that. It's Nigeria, please. Don't bring any church thing here. Bring it oh, Bring it. Because you are the... Don't try to dichotomize your life and say this is my social life. This is my spiritual life. What is the meaning of that nonsense? In one of the revelations, the four living creatures were in one body. Huh? Four dimensions functioning in one body. We must be far from iniquity. It has been the ancient key to the presence and the power of God. And by the grace of God Almighty, we will not water it down in Koinonia. We will preach the full gospel. I will tell you the truth. The secrets that bring the glory and the presence of God. There are many of us, we watch all kinds of nonsense. We think it does not matter. Look at, look at the way your mind is. Huh? You can't look at a beautiful lady and just go free. As soon as they are sharing the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you feel like starting another service for yourself because you have, you have polluted your mind watching all kinds of nonsense. It's a culture. It's a sacrifice. Am I blessing you tonight? Oh yes, it's a sacrifice. There are many of us ladies, anybody. You can even be walking on the road. Somebody will just park and say, enter. You say, oh, really? Let me enter first and find. What sort of, don't you live by values? Everybody say values. Say it, shout it, values. values. 
as a kingdom citizen, never forget this. We live by values. You may see us jump around, but let me tell you, the love of God constrains us. Hallelujah. Sister, let people be able to look at your life and say, how can a beautiful lady like this not be loose? And you say, no, I may be beautiful, but I have sold, I'm, I've given myself like a love slave to God. That I'm beautiful. You know, many brothers see our beautiful ladies. You know Koinonia has pretty ladies, right? Brothers, say amen. amen. They are your wives too, so say amen. amen. But listen to me now. The issue here is that before the transition between now and when they become your wives, you must mind yourself and discipline yourself and be a genuine Christian. Hallelujah. Brothers, let me give you a little secret. If you don't mind yourself with respect to ladies, I'm not talking of sleeping around ladies. Men that are overconscious about ladies never encounter the presence of God powerfully. I'm not talking of sleeping around. You are just thinking. It's, it's, still, it's still the same thing. You are, you are stopping your mind from entering certain dimensions of the secret place. I'm not saying frown at any lady after corner and say, mm, I'm pressing it to God. No, that's not what I'm saying. There are many of us, our own encumbrances is what I call carnality. What you wear. You can be thinking of what to wear for Koinonia from Saturday. Which one will I wear? Let me add, it's, it's good. We believe in excellence, but be careful lest it corrupts your time. We believe in excellence, but let me tell you, it's better to wear bathroom slippers and come and focus and flog it out with destiny and change your life. Who cares whether you wear your Versace or Gucci, thank God. But demons can bypass that Versace and oppress your life. And that's what we are trying to tackle in this place. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you take care of your spiritual life, then you can beautify your body. On the other hand, let me balance it. On the other hand, there are some of us that are careless about our our bodies, we, we do not know that it's still part of spirituality. Right? What you wore yesterday, you just look at it, smell it, it's not very smelly. You just carry it and you're on your way to Koinonia. No. Be intentional about your coming here. Don't make it look like it's a mistake. Be intentional. Plan. These are all aspects of the kingdom. Let everything about your life, neatness, neatness, thoroughness. Some of us are very dirty. The way you are sitting down looking at me like this. Your rooms, there are still plates. There. All these things are, I'm just showing you how that your life must draw people. It will either draw people towards God or away from him. And don't you say it does not matter. The Bible says, add to your faith virtue. The word virtue there is moral excellence. Say, I'm changing. Especially if you really are. Say it, I'm changing. Because some of you, as God is speaking to you, go back to your rooms and wash that plate this night. Wash it this night. Hallelujah. If, come sweetheart, if I'm going to get married to this lady, I'm taking my revelation of God together with all the unrenewed liabilities that I have, I'm coming to say, bring your own. And, and let's, let's, let's wed in holy matrimony. The question is, are you going to be a blessing to your partner? Or the person will look at you and say, had I known? What deceived me? What didn't I see? Huh? Say I'm a blessing. The Bible says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Bless you. You must be a soul winner from today. Whatever you will do to bring souls to the kingdom, I say whatever in the positive way, right? Don't go and do all kinds of Babylonian things and say whatever, let souls be one. No, in the kingdom, the means is as important as the end. I've taught you, right? Because if, if you say, I am doing this and that so that souls will come, I, I allowed the man to go for weekend with me because I'm trying to win him. 
between now and the next one month you must be born again no no that's not that's not the kind of born again we are talking about praise the lord say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i become serious with my spiritual life in the name of jesus i lay aside every weight and everything that corrupts my christian testimony two more things i'll talk about and then we'll pray and we'll be done hallelujah i want to talk about two things i have seen across that stops many souls from coming to the kingdom number one is anger among believers write it i don't know where this impartation of the spirit of anger flew and came from there are many of your anger is not demons the demons left since february miracle service but the anger is still there anger rage it is an aspect of your christian life you must blot out you must blot out please write it anger you can be as calm as a dove but when you get angry you can give it to anybody there are some sisters right here in this place you would have been married since if only you address this issue if you like go to prophet apostle pastor teacher you must change that thing. there are some brothers here you don't have friends say i don't care i'm in a world all by myself you have beat everybody close to you because of anger your younger ones run away from you there's nothing about your life that is pleasing because of anger there are many pastors today the anger and the rage they have they can finish preaching even on stage they can almost slap the other person i said sing ten or what, what are you singing and you are wondering and then the guy turns and says, let's pray and he's looking i say yes, I don't. <laughs> Number two, immorality. Immorality. Let's bury this thing this night. Look at me. Look at me. Do not let anyone, please, 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 koinonia, my conscience must be clear before God and I must tell you, do not let anyone convince you, convince you, that a life of immorality you can be able to patch your christian experience and patch immorality i'm saying it now you must hear me in jesus name i'm i'm telling you this from the depths of my heart there are many of you as i'm talking even the holy spirit is saying thank you jesus finally i'm getting to i'm not condemning you <laughs> I tell you the number of believers sir the number of believers that are compromising on their christian integrity especially over the issue of immorality this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many souls do not come to the kingdom if you're involved in all those things i love you but you must stop this night in jesus name say amen whether it be, you are part of it or not say amen Immorality is not just sleeping around. Hold on. So that you don't just say, thank God, me, I don't sleep around. Even God knows. Hold on. Pornography. Pornography. Right now we have our blackberries. It's amazing. You check Christian phones and see the kinds of things there. I'll talk about it. Pornography. All kinds of other devilish things. And don't just blame the devil the day your roommate sees you and says ah, ah, what is this with naked they say it's, it's satan I'm, I'm even waiting for the end of the month no don't mock god don't mock god don't make it look like you come for miracle service and say lord i'm open and then you receive that one there are many of us we are great men and women of god but this is the setback in our lives right look listen to me this is this is bethel the place of bread huh what I'm doing to you now is like a, jo a doctor giving a patient injection. You feel the pain, but that chloroquine must enter so that you will be healed. 
immorality. Sisters, let me talk to you. You must create rules in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have not been doing it, create rules. If you are in a relationship, talk about it. You are in a relationship with, with a lady. Part of the reasons why you are in a relationship with her is because you are physically attracted to her. Sit down and be saying, I'm a man of God and you'll be very surprised. Warn yourself. Tell yourself, myself behave. Receive grace from God. Create boundaries. Huh? I, I will tell you this. Don't think, oh, this is the Lord. Man, if this law is going to keep you focused and useful, so be it. So be it. Hallelujah. There are many of us. Study yourself, sister. You know you are very vulnerable. Huh? Don't go as I say, I know he's just a pastor. It's been long since I washed his plate. Was the plate not washed? Was it not washed? Thank God for your generosity, but you must be careful. Anything you cannot do in the open is questionable. Are you getting what I'm saying? And many of us who are pastors here, you are the, we are the ones that are subject to the greatest attack. Hear me. Hear me. Man of God, you accepted the call and you are careless with your life. You will be very surprised. If there is the call of God upon your life, guard your anointing. You see the way men embarrass themselves. You can fake healing. Deliverance is what will really show you whether you are all of that. You'll be casting and demons. Demons are just laughing and saying all kinds of things. It should never be so. We are going to pray because I know that there are people affected in these areas. Are you getting my point? And trust me, if you think you need help, please see me for counseling. I am more than more than willing to help you we are a family don't say i'm a man of god i'm struggling with masturbation or struggling with immorality and i think is 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 an issue there's nothing to be ashamed of are you hearing what i'm saying there is nothing to be ashamed of because you see spiritual things cannot be hidden for too long they will find expression immorality is something we, we must work. i know god is helping us we are young people right the tv the media all kinds of things the the challenge on the average young man right now is is maybe 100 times more than it used to be 40 50 years ago i understand that but it's still not an excuse and please don't let anybody fool you that everybody is doing it huh there are many of us that will tell you who is not doing it no mm -mm. there are people who truly truly have taken advantage of the grace of God and they love God sincerely. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. Make up your mind. And if you think you cannot hold yourself, start finding a wife quick. Quick. No, 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 no. I'm very serious. I'm not playing games. The Bible says it. It is Bibles. I'm not saying you're married because, mm -mm, but the Bible says if peradventure in your quest to love God and you find out that you have prayed, you have fasted, you know that this one is not demons again, please marry. I'm telling you this. Marry. It is a biblical, I say, it doesn't change anything. Are you joking? Are you married to know whether it changes something or not? Just marry. Obey the Bible. Don't start arguing with scriptures. Anger. Immorality. Immorality. You have, a, you have pastor friends or groups sit together and talk about this. Talk about this in love. Don't condemn people. And you, when somebody comes to meet you and says, see, I find myself sleeping around. You say, I knew it. The way I've been looking at you, I know you are not straight. No, no, no. That ministry is not given to you because that's the issue. That's, listen, listen, we're rounding up. That's the reason why many people are unable to open up because they are afraid. They don't trust us men of God. They don't trust. Somebody comes and opens up and tells you, this is the challenge in my life. This is what I'm going through. They will say, ah, have you had forget everybody you see preaching on stage oh, people are dying in silence the other person say what are you talking about I say I will just you something happened no as a minister you are a steward don't betray people's trust on you are, are you hearing what I'm saying but please 
I'm talking to you, this is an admonishment from the depths of my heart. You feel that there are issues compromising your Christian experience and you need help. By the grace of God, God has anointed us to be able to offer you help. And with Jesus' joy and with every open heart, it's a privilege. But don't sit down and die. You can fake it before men. But you see, you are, it's, it's a seed you are sowing. It's a seed you are sowing. We are going to pray. Just two prayer points. Rise up on your feet. And we'll be done for tonight. Today's service was another dimension by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. While we are taking the first prayer point, at the same time, an altar call is going to be made. Please, everyone listen. This is a serious altar call. There are many of us tonight who are saying, Lord, please take my whole life. I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm tired of living life my own way. You may have even given your life to Christ before, but you know that you are not serious with God and you want to step up your Christian experience. God has shown you that he wants to use you. He's shown you that he wants to do mighty things. But you are saying, Lord, I have not truly surrendered everything. The moment we start praying, I'd like you to just come and go on your knees here. I would like to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Young, old, whatever, please, you need to truly make up your heart and your mind to the Lord. Hallelujah. The moment we start praying, please, I'd like you to come up. We're out of time. Prayer point number one. Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, put a passion for souls. Put a genuine passion for souls in my life. That beginning from tonight, I will begin to be serious about winning souls and making sure that people are established in the faith. Lift your voice and pray. While they are doing that, all those who need to come out, find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. The remaining, the, the rest of us, please keep praying. God bless you. All of you who are coming, just come and kneel down here. Before God. There are still people sitting down. The Lord is speaking to you. If you need to be out, don't wait for anybody. Find your way and come. While the rest of us pray. Take it seriously tonight. This is the beginning. Those of us who need to come out. This is the beginning of your journey. Your spiritual journey to relevance. Your spiritual journey. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is home for you. Find your way. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. If the Holy Ghost is telling you you need to be here, then you need to be here. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Those of you in front, open up yourself to the Lord from the depths of your heart. Let's sing one more time. I surrender all. I'm not the person I used to be. I am a brand new person. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Listen, all of you. You are not the brother or the sister that just came and knelt down here. You are walking up totally free. I don't care what it is you have done. I don't care what has been the testimony. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all, the th all things new. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I declare by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that you use these ones. May they be powerful men and women from today transform their lives. I break the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus, I break the power that causes you to rebel against the ways of God. I declare that from today you will have passion for the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like you to celebrate them, Koinonia.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. Rise up. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll have your information on Tuesday. Um, you pray with the prayer department so that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. For those of you who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they'll administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Our time is up. We can take um, another prayer request. Well, that's okay for today. Um, before I invite those of us who are worshiping with us for the first time, let me just take a few announcements. Now, I want to announce something. Please, next week Friday, the Lord put this in my heart. Next week Friday, I like us as a family of faith and all those who are connected to this ministry all across the nations, all across this nation, please I like us to fast. Hallelujah. We are going to fast. And your fasting starts from 6 p.m. on Thursday. Hallelujah. Not 6 a.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. That's Friday night. You won't eat anything. We are going to be praying there are certain things that God wants to birth and bring. Hallelujah. So we're fasting from Thursday, 6, 6 what? 6 p.m., right? And we'll run it as a marathon until, um, if I said Friday, 6 p.m., we will not eat before coming. So we'll break by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is okay. So that you can eat before coming. Please, listen. It's a dry fast, complete dry. There's no sipping water or honey. There's none of those things. Please. I, listen, listen. Those are, are, are children here. For the sake of the children, um, you may, they, they can just start their fast from 6 in the morning to maybe 12. But if they feel they can go the extra mile, no problem. If you're sick and you're on medication, you can choose whether to join us or not. But please, everyone, Thursday from 6 p.m., it's not just to fast and sleep. By the grace of God, from Friday morning, this, this place will be open. Prayer department from Friday, if you people can pay the price, will allow this place, while the setup is going on, you can stay around, pray around, just pray and prepare. By 3 o'clock, you go and eat well and come. You won't die, please. Don't frown at me like that. You won't die. This, listen, this something will happen to your spirit. Some of you have done it. You've done more than that. But just run it that marathon. So whatever you have to do, just know that once it is 6 o'clock, even if you have not eaten the whole day, once it's 6 o'clock, know that the vehicle has started moving. Praise God. It's moving down till that time. All, all escorts, all escorts, we are stretching till 6. All escorts, we are not stopping by 3. We are stretching till 6. All your food, you can come and eat it here. Come and die here. But till 6, please. So, the whole, is not 12 hours now. It's 24 hours. And there is, I know that there is capacity that we need to build in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.